Hi, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, and welcome to the second edition of our Beginner's Corner tutorial for Covered Call Writing. Over the years, the Beginner's Corner has been our second most popular free resource on our website, thebluecollarinvestor.com, second only to the basic Elman calculator. This tutorial has launched the covered call writing careers of thousands and thousands of investors all over the world. Now, recently, I decided to enhance the Beginner's Corner tutorial for covered call writing, and that is what you are participating in right now. Now, this particular tutorial will consist of eight video lessons. The one that you're currently viewing is what is covered call writing. Lesson two will discuss option basics, followed by stock selection based on fundamental and technical analysis. In lesson four, we'll discuss stock selection based on common sense principles. Then we'll discuss calculations for stock and option selection. Lesson six will cover executing a covered call trade followed by exit strategies or position management. And finally, lesson eight will put it all together with a step-by-step -step process for mastering the strategy of covered call writing. Now, I'm gonna ask you to keep in mind that this eight-part tutorial is an overview of covered call writing. At the end of lesson eight, I will suggest certain educational tools which will allow us to master the strategy of covered call writing. So the video tutorials, Beginner's Corner, is just a starting point. Uh, I hope you feel, you feel it's a valuable starting point. Nonetheless, after going through it, you won't be ready to start risking your hard-earned money in this great strategy. So let's get started with lesson one, what is covered call writing? Well, it's an investment strategy that actually combines two strategies. The first is stock ownership. Okay, we're all familiar with buying and selling stock. It's also combined with option selling, and I'm highlighting the word selling because covered call writing puts us on the sell side of options. Then selling something implies we're gonna be receiving a cash payment for it, and that is precisely what covered call writing will do for us. Now a stock, as you know, is a unit of ownership in a company. So when we buy a share of stock, we are actually owners in that particular company. An option is a contract. A contract that gives the buyer of that option the right but not the obligation to buy or sell shares. In the case of covered call writing, we are selling a call option selling the right to some unknown person to buy our shares from us at a price that we determine by a date that we determine. Let's have a look at the three words in the phrase covered call writing. Covered means that we buy the stock before selling the option. So we are in a protected or covered position. We know our cost basis. When we sell an option, we're agreeing to sell shares at a certain price. By buying the stock first, we know our cost basis, what we paid for that stock. Had we not bought the shares first and sold the option, we would be in a very risky, naked option position, and I don't recommend that strategy at all unless you're a very sophisticated investor that's willing to take on a whole lot of risk. The second word in the phrase is call, and that's the type of option we are selling. We are selling some unknown person the right to buy our shares from us at a price that we determine, which is known as the strike price, by a date that we determine, which is known as the expiration date. In return for undertaking this obligation, we are paid a cash premium. The third word is writing. That means we are initiating, starting the trade by selling the option. On our trade execution forms, as you'll see later on, it will read sell to open. We're selling a call option 
to open a particular trade. It might also just have the initials STO. Let's uh, show us a um, preview example here to make everything come alive. So we're gonna start off in this example by buying 100 shares of company XYZ. It's important to keep in mind for every option we sell, we must own 100 shares of the underlying stock. So one options contract will consist of 100 shares of the underlying stock. So if we paid $48 for company XYZ, 100 shares would represent an investment of $4,800. Once we own these shares and we are in that covered or protected position, we are now free to sell the option. In this hypothetical, let's sell the $50 call option, agreeing to sell our shares for $50, at any time over the next one month. Now, for undertaking this obligation, we are paid a cash premium. And a typical premium would be $1.50 a share or $150 for the 100 shares, less some very small trading commissions. This would represent a 3.1% initial return. And if we could do that every month, it would annualize out to 37%. Now, at the end of the contract, there are two possible major outcomes. In the first, let's assume the price of the stock does not go higher than the $50 agreed upon sales price. Well, the person that bought the option is not going to exercise it and then agree to buy our shares for 50 if they're trading at market at a lower price. So the option expires worthless. We keep the $150. We still own the shares. And now we're free to sell another option on those shares in the next contract month. In the second major possible outcome, the price of the stock does go higher than $50. Let's assume for a moment that it pops up to 52. Well, the option buyer is gonna exercise that option, buy our shares from us at 50, and turn around and sell it at market at 52, thereby generating a profit. But with the option sellers, so let's have a look at this trade through our eyes. We first generated $150 on the sale of the option. Then we generated an additional $200 on the sale of the stock. We bought it 48 and sold it at 50 times 100. That represents a total one month profit of $350 or a 7.3% one month return. Now, if we were to annualize that, it would come out to that ridiculous number at the bottom of the screenshot, 87% annualized. So let me stop and state the obvious. You're not gonna get this kind of return on every position in your portfolio every month of the year, but you already knew that. However, you will see this kind of return in a few of your positions every month. So you have to know which option to select based on the current market environment. It's something we'll be addressing later on in the tutorial. Now, we're always asked, is there risk? Of course there's risk because we're looking to achieve a higher than a risk-free return, more than we can get from buying treasuries or CDs or money markets. So if we want higher than a risk-free return, by definition, we are agreeing to incur risk. And we're going to be doing everything possible to minimize that risk and maximize our gains. So what is the risk? Well, if the price of the stock drops below the break even, we start to lose money. In the preview example, we bought the shares at 48 and sold the 50 call for $1.50. Our break even is 46.50. So if the price of the stock drops below 46.50, we start to lose money, and that is the risk. Now, let me just mention this also, that we're capping the upside when we sell a covered call. So in the preview example, we bought the stock at 48, sold the 50 call. If the price of the stock goes higher than 50, we don't participate in that additional appreciation, even though our monthly return will be phenomenal. 
But the main risk on the downside is that if it drops below the break even, and that's why we need to be prepared with our exit strategy arsenal. So let me uh, summarize uh, lesson one. Uh, covered call writing is a conservative cash generating strategy. It combines two strategies, stock ownership and option selling. We must master the three required skills, stock selection, option selection, and position management. One or two is not good enough before risking our hard-earned money. And we'll be covering all aspects of this in lessons two through eight. So uh, in lesson two, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be discussing option basics. And that ends lesson one. Uh, so as always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Until we see you next, take care, everybody.